Well, when I wrote the song, um, I'm Coming Out for Diana Ross, I uh, happened to go to a club that night, and um, I guess it was um, a transvestite Diana Ross look-alike contest, which I had no idea was happening. Mm -hmm. And I went to the bathroom, and there was on either side of me was like at least three or four deep guys dressed up as Diana Ross impersonators. I called my partner. I said, dude, we got to write a song called I'm Coming Out. And he said, what are you talking about? I said, it would be like James Brown. Say it loud. I'm black and I'm proud for the gay community. I promise you. And that's got to be in there. That's a great story. <laughs> that wow. is a great story. That's exactly what happened. Go ahead. Yeah, well, for me, uh, it would be the uh, live audition we did for Clive Davis at Sunset Sound Studios in Hollywood. That's the day I'll never forget. That kind of started it all, right? It sure that's did. That sure kicked did. it all off. You know, yep. 1973, we were, we were the opening act for the Jackson 5. I bought it down in Miami Beach. I, I just passed the place the other day. The, the store where I bought it doesn't exist, but that little strip where they used to have all the, the pawn shops, and I, I couldn't believe it. Um, yeah, and I still carry it with me everywhere I go. Uh, my doctor tells me, hey, man, you know, Nyla, can't you get somebody to carry that for you? And sure. I said, absolutely not. <laughs> <laughs> no way. I, yeah, no, it's, you know, it's, it's the only guitar like that in the world. Um, it, it was the runt of the litter, litter and um, I had no idea because I was a jazz musician, and it was the first time I ever bought a solid body guitar, so I just wanted to buy the cheapest one in the store. So when I got it, I didn't know that it was cheap because it was in inferior. It was um, not made to um, Stratocaster standards. It was sort of like in between. It's all, it's, you know, Leo Fender was notoriously famous as being a cheap person. If he saw something on the ground, if he saw a screw on the ground, he would pick it up and try and fi put it into anything that was there. <laughs> no kidding. Um, it would be Miles Davis because um, we became very, very close uh, near the end of his life, and he kept asking me to write him an R&B funk song. And, you know, Miles had a sort of prickly personality, but was always cool with me, so I always thought he was setting me up for a joke. And I'd write a jazz fusion song, and he would go, man, I can write that. Marcus can write that. I want me a good times. <laughs> and I never took him seriously. Well, let me start off, because my very first show with Chic ever was in Oakland, our very first concert. For us, I think, I think playing at the Cow Palace in San Francisco the very first time when Bill Graham was promoting the show. Right. Wow. Right. You know. And we also recorded some of Gratitude right there. With in the Oakland. live record. Right. Yes. Exactly. Yes. Yep. Yeah, I heard he, that he's uh, performing again. Uh, we were talking about it yesterday. And uh, who knows, you know, somewhere uh, on tour, we might run into one another and, <laughs> and hit, hit that live again. That would be cool. You need a guitar player? Yeah, you're on. 